patience with us this week as we've tried to get our arms around this. And um, JD and Yama will be here in a moment. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much to everyone for coming. We appreciate everyone's patience as we tried to get our arms around this unspeakable tragedy that occurred Sunday night. Our focus has been on family, both Matisse's in Latvia and our own Blue Jackets family here and we're doing everything we can to support everyone. On behalf of my wife and my daughters who have been extremely helpful, our ownership led by John P. McConnell, and of course Mike Priest, the Blue Jackets organization, and I offer our sincerest, our sincerest condolences to the Kavlinitz family, particularly Matisse's mother, Astrida. I'd also like to thank our fans the Columbus community and the hockey world for the outpouring of love they've shown Kivy these past three days. It's been spectacular. The, players and, or the prayers and messages of support we've received have been overwhelming and very much appreciated by all of us. I'd like to thank Kivy's agent, Jay Grossman, STS Kozios, who is involved and uh, runs the Latvian Ice Hockey Federation for their support and their assistance. While in the morning themselves, they have been wonderful in helping us communicate with Kivi's family and assisting with all the uh, arrangements that need to be made. A, gigant a gigantic huge thank you to our head coach, Brad Larson. When we heard about this very late Sunday night, Brad got in his car Monday morning, went right to Michigan and just got back today. He has been there with families and supporting and leading and showing compassion. This is a spectacular person for what he's done. Um, I'd like to say that a long time ago, about four years ago, we got a plane, Yarmo, myself, Bill Zito, and Ian Clark, who was our goalie coach at the time, we flew to Sioux City. And we met Jay Grossman, the agent, and we met Kivy. And Kivy's eyes were about that big in the restaurant. He was just a young man, kid actually, who had dreams, wanted to be a major league NHL goaltender. And we wanted to have him come and be a part of the Blue Jackets organization. You could see the passion in his face. You could hear it in his voice. He had a dream, and he lived his dream. That's when I first met him. I think the last time I saw Kivy, I was on the other end of it with the Rangers. The Blue Jackets had a ton of injuries. Kivy had a chance to play goal, start the game at Madison Square Garden. It was fabulous. They won that one, two, one. We lost, but I felt good for that kid. 
Um, we understand you have questions, but we're not here to, today to talk about all the details of the events of Sunday night. The police report, once it's finalized and released, will speak to that. But we understand at this point uh, that uh, it was a day and a night of celebrating one of the most cherished events, a wedding. And the daughter of our goaltending coach, Manny Legacy, Sabrina, was married. It ended in a horrific accident that took life, took the life of a wonderful young man. I ask that you keep the Legacy family who considered Kivy a son and a brother in your prayers as uh, they are understandably distraught. I would also ask that you do the same for Elvis Mers Lincolns, his wife, uh, Estranda, who was, uh, who was there too. They were Kivy's closest friends and they were with him that night. This is a devastating loss for them and for all of us, one that will always be with us. Thank you, Yarmo. Yeah, I think our players that played with him said it the best that, that he always came to the rink with a smile on his face and, and with a great positive attitude. And I remember that trip to uh, Sioux City like yesterday. We'd watched him uh, play in the USHL and thought greatly of his potential and a and, uh, and big part of it was his attitude. That he wanted to get better every day, and it's just so sad to have him gone. If you have a question now for those who are here, please raise your hand. We'll go to uh, Jared Smalley first. Thank you, John. Uh, obviously, there are a number of logistical challenges in all this with the family being so far away. Uh, there's a language barrier. Can you walk us through how you're trying to work out memorial opportunities be it here in Ohio, uh, there in Latvia? What's that process like yeah, right we're now? We're working on that. Um, this all started late that night. Uh, one of the first calls was to Mike, to the commissioner. Everybody was on board with everything, anything they could do to help us. Um, fortunately, with uh, Viestos over there, he speaks uh, really good English. Um, Elvis Mers Lincolns, who was there, extremely good at, at both speaking the Latvian language and, and English, just tremendously helpful through all this. Uh, as far as the, the, the future goes regarding services and things, we're right in the middle of working on that. Uh, we're hoping to get that finalized shortly, and then we'll let everybody know. Uh, I don't want to say anything right now because we don't have it finalized, but we're right in the middle of working on it, so it's going, uh, it's going in that direction. Let's go to Brian Hedrick in front. Any of you guys, um, <clears throat> without getting, like you said, into specifics or anything, I think one of the main things that people are asking right now, uh, at least I, I hear it, um, is, you know, the team released their re report and confirming what happened, and it mentions uh, falling and the head injury, and obviously since then we've learned about fireworks. Like, can you shed any light as to, did you guys know at that point like, uh, what all, happened? All I can say is that we, we said what we were told, and we said a, a parent head injury. We didn't say it was a head injury, we said apparent. And uh, obviously once they raced to get Kivy to the hospital and, uh, and uh, tried everything they could uh, with, with, with everybody's being there when, and Kivy being supported, they did their work and this is what we found out. We, we tried to be ahead of it, tell the truth, and that's, uh, that's where we were. It was an apparent head injury. I think obviously we've learned a lot more since. Aaron Portsline. For both of you guys, this is a tragedy that extends certainly beyond just the, the ultimate victim. How concerned are you about uh, Manny Legacy and Elvis Merzlikens having witnessed this and having been so close to a, a, and lost a person they were so close to? I, I think that's one reason why Brad Larson spent three days there. Um, there's always layers of, 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 of just terribleness that happens with these things. And uh, obviously, we're, this is about Kibbe and his family, but it's about the extended family that we belong to, the, the Blue Jackets family. We as an organization have, we work everything from grief counselors to, to people phoning, to text, everything from A to Z. We're trying to cover every base we possibly can because we know exactly what you're saying, Cordy, is this isn't just a, the, the fact itself, this has, far-reaching effects. There was, this was Manny's daughter's wedding, and all those people were there. And this, this tragedy happened. 
So we've got to deal with it. We have to deal with it in the right way, which I'm very confident we are. We have professionals uh, available for anybody who needs help, anybody who needs to talk to, uh, to, to those people and, and, and help them through this. Clay. A lot of people in this room have spoken or written about the impact this young man had in such a short time. Why do you think that's so? And, and I only spoke with him two or three times, but it was, it was the smile, but he, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think always we talk about a locker room being such a close space and you're there every day, all season long. And, and uh, it, re it reveals people's character. And, and that's the one thing that was so positive about Matisse that, that uh, you know, he always had the right attitude, the positive attitude. Came to the rink with a, with a smile on his face, whether he was playing or, or being a backup or, or just trying to get better every day with the, with the uh, end goal in mind, uh, trying to be an NHL goalie. He went through some ups and downs even in Cleveland, uh, but always went through them with, with a smile on his face, with the right attitude. And, you know, that's been said pretty much by every player that has made any remarks on, on the uh, terrible incident. So um, I, I think that speaks volumes of his character when, when all of his teammates have basically had the same message about it. Yarmo, a question for you on, you know, there's, there's obviously a couple sides to this. There's the human being side far outweighing the hockey player side. From the hockey side, how valuable was he to the future of the franchise? What, what, what was his future like as, as a Blue Jacket player? What did you envision for him in terms of the role he could play here? We projected him as a full-time NHL goalie you know, with, with lots of potential. He, uh, uh, as JD mentioned, his debut in the NHL was, was a great success. Um, we had him play those games at the end of this season for a reason because we felt that he's going to be a, a big part of our future. And, and, uh, full-time NHLer and, and that's what we had envisioned when we uh, signed him as a free agent and and that's that's what we were building towards and, and uh, you know he had a bright future. Gentlemen if you'll allow me a question about the weekend. Um, preliminarily police are calling this an accident. Are you satisfied with that or do you feel that someone should be held responsible criminally? The police report will take care of that. I can't comment one way or the other. I'm confident in the people that were there. Uh, this, to me, seems like a tragic accident, but the police report will take care of that. A couple quick ones. Uh, just uh, what you were talking about earlier, having people available, I, I would assume that's also for players. Mm -hmm. Without getting into any names, have you guys heard from players that may be interested in that? Oh, that's, that's personal edge. Um, even when we have players talk to uh, professionals during the season, that's their business. I don't even know about it. So we supply all the help that we possibly can, and it's an option for the players, their families, people that work for the Blue Jackets. I mean, this, I've seen a lot of down faces around here. Uh, hey, this, this kid was available. He made uh, people smile. He's just a great kid. So it's, we'll do what we can to, to help anybody that needs it. With the Rangers when he made his debut at, at mm -hmm. Essence Square Garden, obviously you probably hoped, you know, in that game that it would go differently. But when, do you remember watching him in that game at all as oh, a yeah, former yeah. goaltender? Well, and yeah, I knew that the the Blue Jackets had had injuries, and I knew uh, Matisse was starting. And it was interesting because w when you're in the hockey business, you, it's you know of guys you played with, you know of guys that. Uh, Sons of people you play, you always keep a watch. And the Blue Jackets, of course, I watch. It was it wasn't gone that long, and and uh, it was a, it was a special interest to watch the young man play. He passed he passed the test in a tough building, one of the one of the great buildings in the world for sports, and that's something that's on his resume forever. And congrats for congrats for him. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.